He's not going to come up with an incredibly complicated currency scam. That's not how you do it. That's not how you, that's not how you make a lot of money. What you do is you you monetize Raccoon Show. That's what I'm planning on doing. <laughs> Turn Raccoon Show into an open core project. You're going to get Raccoon Show Enterprise. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Bad Voltage, Season 3, Episode 10, uh, with my good friend Stuart Language and, of course, uh, Jeremy... Look at the wheel spinning, wheel spinning, <laughs> Roseanne wheel spinning. Garcia. <laughs> you have to prep this stuff should've, ahead of time. Should have planned better for that one. I did not prepare for that one. Uh, so we are going to keep this very brief. <laughs> Uh, we were going to do a segment, and then we uh, we said we'll do about 20 minutes of news, and then we spent an hour talking about news. So this is a deeply, deeply bumper show of news. <laughs> it is. And that's it. Should we get into it? We should. So it's time for the news, and we have, honestly, a loopy amount of news. I mean, some of this is due to the fact that we've... We've spent uh, time drilling in, in detail into big topics for the last couple of shows. But I don't know whether this is a sign that things are starting to happen again. That things are, things are <laughs> happening to talk about that aren't about the coronavirus, which is interesting. Yes, yeah. The coronavirus or the PlayStation 5. That's all I'm seeing in my Reddit <laughs> feeds right now. <laughs> These two are kind of related, but not related. Uh, well... Um, should we start with... Yeah? Go ahead. This is exactly the thing. You'd be amazed at what's actually going on. So a perfect example of this. <laughs> Apparently, um, as if we didn't have enough to worry about already, some baby witches have put a hex on the moon. <laughs> and that's what's <laughs> causing a bunch of the problems. I have two oh, comments. that's what's causing the problems. I have two comments here. One, for those of you unawares, a fresh baby witch is defined as an inexperienced witch who should only be researching and doing protection work because I did not know that it is a parenthetical to the article uh, but also normally I would write this off as just a funny news item it's 2020 I have no idea yeah <laughs> I, I mean I am honestly at this point thinking hell yeah maybe it's witches putting a hex on the moon I'm prepared to credit it as much as basically everything else at this point it's... was it uh, was it that doctor who came out was talking about how uh, you know mental illnesses from demon semen or whatever it is like <laughs> the whole story that came out last week it sounds like the same person oh, well. who was saying that like aliens are responsible for some diseases this was like a, this became like viral on Twitter oh, well <laughs> like, I mean I re- <laughs> obviously this witch thing came from Twitter right but it originated on tiktok so these are not um these are witches doing ceremonies on tiktok apparently which is a new experience for me but okay fine you know do what you gotta do um but the thing which the thing which amazed me the thread is brilliant right because about half of it is people going what the hell are you people going on about (laughs) that is an appropriate reaction well half of the remainder is people going yeah, I buy that, man. That seems plausible. <laughs> and then the rest of it is people pissing and moaning that these are um, inexperienced witches who are taking on uh, spells and rituals which are too serious for them. And that's what's causing the problems. Not that, you know, witches, but <laughs> they're, just, right. they're, um, they're just doing it wrong as witches and the the, the, the the culture clash between these groups is fantastic it is it sounds like which is the new ai right it's like could conceivably be used for good but it's probably going to be used for evil well, if it's used irresponsibly that sounds entirely yeah. right i mean I'm, I'm assuming datadog now has a chart plotting number of witches in all of your products <laughs> <laughs> it will soon <laughs> Um, Alrighty. Um, All right. On, but this is not similar news, but um, it tickled my funny bone somewhat. Um, apparently, fourteen percent of men fantasize about the voice of Alexa. Th- that is. Now not you're talking about news. Alexa, the the the, the uh, Amazon uh, the Amazon thing, right? I am. And everyone listening to this um, without headphones on, theirs has just woken up. 
So. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I find this both unsurprising and surprising at the same time. Like, it's just a bit weird. Like, uh, I, I, I've, well, I know this is probably not the venue to ask you a question like this, gentlemen, but have you ever fa- fantasized by anything that is robotic or fictional or anything along those lines? I've never fantasized about anything no. robotic. I'm taking the fifth on the fictional question. This is- <laughs> <laughs> so that was fire. <laughs> Far too much information, and I've known you for a long time, so moving right along. But this is one of those, look at the source things. It says, but the survey only asked a thousand people and was commissioned by a company that sells app-enabled sex toys. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, okay. um, yeah. So, so, and, so you go to perverts.com, and that's the results that you get. Well, I mean, <laughs> there is a slightly serious point here, and I appreciate we're in the middle of the funny end of the news segments, and serious bits come later, but... I always found it very fractionally creepy how an awful lot of uh, home assistant voices tend to be female and unchangeably so. I mean, because I quite like... I've done talks in the past about how the role that um, a voice assistant plays is something like a a Victorian butler or a sergeant major to the lieutenant or something like that. Yeah, It's slightly servile without necessarily um, always being so and but I don't particularly like that they're all like yeah and that voice will be female it'd be nice if it wasn't always you know I always found it weird with things like tom toms and stuff like that as well it's interesting you say that because I had assumed and I might be wrong I have no idea if this, if this is the case or not that they primarily picked a female voice because it's a friendly uh it's it's a more human like it just feels more human right uh than than a male voice it's a softer more gentle voice and i, I that's why but i think you're right like maybe this is just some implicit bias and like I, people, I, they're like I, I, I think women will probably be doing this work i'm, I'm sure suspect. there's plenty of research out there for the companies that make these devices i look forward to the follow-up yep. him instead of her uh, well yeah that was the film yeah <laughs> Um, right. Uh, so, moving swiftly on from gender politics before we wade into waters that we really shouldn't be commenting on. No. Um, yes, exactly. Uh, did you see the thing about the the book guy? <laughs> this is brilliant. Um, uh, no. Bloke released a uh, serious historical novel, and there's a section about dye making. Right? And this is, you know, fully researched, um, detailed historical novel, and... There's bits in there where he gives the list and he says, um, so quoting from the book, um, it's, so it's it's fictional, right? So it's a historical novel. It's not a, it's not a non-fiction book, um, but it's meant to be historically accurate. And he says, in addition for the red I had used for Abrila's dress, I employed spicy pepper, the tail of the rid Liz, Lizalfos, and four Hylian shrooms. At which point, a whole bunch of people popped up and went, you know all those things are out of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, right? <laughs> and that's the recipe for making red dye in Breath of the Wild. So what the guy did, and he's put his hands up to this. He said, okay, I mean, I don't even remember doing it, but what I obviously did was I just Googled red dye recipe and pulled it out of the first thing that came up on a Google search, failing to notice that this was fictionally being done by Link at the time. But if, if you're doing historical <laughs> fiction and reference a fictional game, isn't that historically fictionally accurate? I I would like ah. to... Be, uh, no, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try and come up with a long way around this, but no, at no point in, in Moby Dick... Does Homer Melville go on about, you know, populous? <laughs> this is not... <laughs> wow, populous, okay. Hey, hey, Moby Dick was written a long time ago, right? They hadn't seen Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Maybe the original Legend of Zelda. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, I thought wow. that was um, a, ca- a cautionary tale for all of you um, Googling without actually reading what your results are. <laughs> yeah. Should we have some uh, slightly more serious news? Spaking, do you want to I think we off? should. Yeah, did you see um, recently the Linux Foundation uh, announced their public health initiative, um, and there were a couple of projects that were contribute contributed to that. One was called COVID Shield, if I recall correctly, and another one was called COVID Green, uh, which was uh, built by 
I don't have the name of the company in front of me, but an Irish company. Um, and they did a whole bunch of, um, they actually put it into action in Ireland. Um, and they got some interesting results from it. And they basically contributed this, these two apps to the foundation. And they're basically fo- focusing on uh, COVID contact tracing, which we've obviously talked about quite a bit in the past. And I think they're primarily using the Google API um, right now. And then and they're going to be using the Apple APIs as well. So, you know, this is very Linux Foundation, like a collaborative project where, you know, a bunch of members in there and they've got a bunch of open source projects. So what do you guys think of it? I mean, I, I think this is a good thing. Like, I can't say it's a bad thing, but what do you think? I, I don't think there's anything you can possibly complain about here. I mean, the Irish Health and Safety Executive um, got the contact tracing app built. The code was open source. It's published on GitHub. They've now donated it to the Linux Foundation's public health projects so, um, so it can be used in loads of other places. A bunch of other countries are picking up on these apps that have been open source. I mean, this is exactly how it's meant to work, right? This is how we right. want it to work. You know, the thing that I, I, I wrote a blog post about this when, it, when they announced it, and uh, the one thing I'm this is a bit of inside baseball for open source, but I know Jeremy is very familiar with him. But one thing that excites me about this is that Dan Khan, who was the executive director of the CNCF, is running this. And Dan is a, at times, prickly individual, <laughs> but he is unbelievably good at what he does. And I think you need someone in that kind of position, because I think the success of these organizations is often pretty dependent on who's running them. So I think it's good that you've got someone like him. And, uh, you know, uh, from the uh, from what I know um, already, he's just killing it. He's doing a great job. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Do we think something like this will catch on? Because I know in the U.S. they were doing it per state, and I don't believe many of the states' apps have caught on. I know Germany, right. they switched from yeah. a public one. or Yeah, the SAP, I think, is writing it now. They switched to a private entity from public. Um, just curious if... We think these will catch on as if, if this does go on without a vaccine longer, or do we think this is because of the nature of, of number of adoptions that you need to be useful, we'll never see it catch on. I have no idea. Yeah, it just it seems like we've been talking about this like these these apps for a while. I mean yeah. we talked about this what a couple of shows back yeah. and yeah. You know, there doesn't seem to, be, seem to be a lot going on. I don't know why that is. So Yeah, I mean I, I, I found myself thinking today shouldn't I have some sort of government app on my phone checking in with other people now that I'm out in the world a bit? Um, and yeah. I do not because obviously there isn't one yet, not for here. Um, yeah, that's the big piece of news here is that Mr. Language went out into the outside world, got his hair cut, start, started licking bench seats and, <laughs> you know, bus handles and whatever there else. Was fortu- there was fortunately no, no licking of bus seats. But yeah, I've been out into the world. How cool <laughs> is that? I didn't explode or yeah. anything. It was marvellous. <laughs> it's it's like the internet but in 3d i know <laughs> uh so what happened with this tw- tw- with twitter hack by the way did you see this this bit you know there's this this bitcoin well everybody seemed to think that it was an attempt to, to solicit bitcoin um but it, uh, the, the, it was um well i don't know if that was the primary goal uh, because from what i read somewhere i can't remember it what what it what what it was is that they weren't very successful with with soliciting the amount of bitcoins that they were looking for well see no uh, this this i think depends on your point of view so they um uh so for those for those people who hadn't seen this um a bunch of very high profile twitter accounts uh people like elon musk um uh, bill gates i think was another one bill gates was another one yeah a bunch of others posted a tweet um, saying, hey, I'm uh, giving away Bitcoin. You donate X amount of Bitcoin to this account and I'll double it, return double back to you. Um, link to the account. Uh, and it got that way because a hack, right? Now, it turns right. out um, subsequently that a bunch of Twitter employees were spearfished. And right. so, and so they were using um internal uh Twitter employee credentials to get access to internal Twitter employee tools in order to do this, rather than hacking the accounts of the people themselves. Um, yeah. I've also seen a fair few people um saying, "Well, they they don't seem to be very good hackers because if I had control of all of those accounts, I'd have made loads more money." Which sounds to me a bit like claiming that paperclips are dead easy to invent once you've seen a paperclip, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Um, I think, 
Yeah, I mean, fine. They didn't get away. Uh, maybe you'd think, well, if I had access to all those cards, I'm sure I could have come away with billions of pounds. But you go, well, how would you actually do it? And what, um, I, I, and what they did was they came away with a reasonably large chunk of cash. Yeah, I think the big worry w- was, though, is that when you when you attack those kinds of accounts, is basically downloading the history of someone's DMs and then using it to blackmail, right? And what was interesting to me is that... Hey, see, like three- to, to me, that's a nightmare, though, right? Because that's way harder a thing to... Yes, I mean, maybe you'd get more money by... If Bill Gates is stupid enough to have done all the stuff he's accused of, which he hasn't done, and then write DMs to people going, hey, check it out. Right. right, I killed JFK or whatever. Then, then, <laughs> then, fine. Yes, you could blackmail him with it, but at that point, you've got to set up a line of communication with him, and you've got to work out how to exchange the money and everything. They did this. Twitter shut it down like an hour later, and they still made a bunch of money. It's in and out, quick. Get the money, gone. Yep. That to me <laughs> seems loads better than coming up so, with some J. Edgar Hoover complicated blackmail scheme. Mo- most of the things, even blackmail aside, the one that I saw was popular was why didn't they tweet as Elon Musk either saying, I'm taking the company private again and bump the stock up or everything's terrible, I'm quitting and would bump the stock down and you could either short it or, or not. That would require two things, a lot of capital. Yeah. And then getting the money out without getting caught, which the <laughs> SEC would immediately watch very, very, very closely. Yeah, Even with the $100,000 that he got on Bitcoin, he got caught. Yeah. <laughs> Be- because he used his real ID on Coinbase, of all things. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean I, the, the, the thing is not making the money. It's not getting caught after making the money. And most of the ways to make money, it turns out, like it's easy to get caught. Yeah. Well, Let's we- not also forget the, the, the primary perpetrator of this crime this is a 17-year-old boy. So, yes. like, a big chunk of this, I think, is just a young kid fucking around. Who made and, a, uh, over a million dollars on a previous scam, got caught, and didn't right. get prosecuted because he was a minor. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, and to be honest with you, if um, if you said to me, okay, how do you make a bunch of money? What you do is you um, break into a vault through the seven security locks, get the FBI to shut one of them off, steal the money, and then blow up the building because they think you're already dead, right? And if the and, and if the kid is going, hmm, best teaching material, <coughs> die hard like I would have been at 17, he's not going to come up with an incredibly complicated currency scam. <laughs> that's there- not how you do it. That's not, how you, that's not how you make a lot of money. What you do is you you monetize Raccoon Show. That's what I'm planning on doing. <laughs> turn Raccoon Show into an open core project. You're going to get Raccoon Show Enterprise. <laughs> There, there was an article on Blo- not to sidebar, but there was an article on Bloomberg about the greatest art heist ever, pro- you know, that ever happened. And it was, you know, once you steal a super famous piece of art, very difficult to sell. And if you can right. sell it, it will be worth a fraction of of what it's actually worth because the number of buyers are very, very limited. So what someone did was they hacked into the seller's account right before they were getting paid and said, ah, "I gave you the wrong place to wire the money. Wire it here instead." And they wired it to the wrong <gasps> place. Boom. Art, art theft. So they never had the painting, <laughs> never had anything, got all the money, got away. Boom. Done. Wow. Yeah. That's good, great. really good. See, the second one, yeah. the second one, I was just thinking there, surely the biggest scam would be the thing where, you know, you take the fractional rounded pennies off of all the transactions or something. And then I realized, but I got that from Superman 3. So moving <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what what's next? Uh, so apparently the the Google search result. Are we going to talk about this? Oh, I thought this was um this this is one of those things that should be taken with a pinch of salt. So this is um a site called the Markup, and they've written a pretty long and pretty interesting piece about how Google search results. If you do a search for something, an awful lot of the time, almost all the stuff you actually see is links to other Google stuff. So the actual search results are not changed. Google have always said we don't do paid ranking in our search results. We won't jack things up, whatever. But in the old days, you did a search and you got a bunch of results. And maybe at the top, you got an, a, you know, a, a paid for result with a yellow background or something. But now you get info boxes and carousels of news stories which are links to amp stories also on google servers and so on and so what the article points out is that if you actually just look at the page result that you get an awful lot of it now is directing you to other google stuff and not to uh, so, so i like don't I say, like that they lumped other google stuff and direct an- so your opinion on direct answers aside yeah 
I don't think direct answers should be lumped in with other Google stuff. Uh, the the thing I'm I, I'm not sure whether I buzz. I I I see the point they're making, and I think it is slightly concerning. But I'm nowhere near as chicken little run around with my head cut off about it as these people are. <laughs> Hang on, are you talking about when you're talking about Google search results? Just so I'm clear, are you talking about the little overview boxes that show you? So there's there's this website called Google, which is a search engine. Yeah, and you type in I, things I, at the top, yeah. and then it shows you stuff in response to your query. Right? I know. Look, I know Dick Munch. Okay, I know what Google is. Okay, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a- I thought you were still using Hot or Alta Vista or something. <laughs> It was Alta Vista. Don't mock me, okay? Or, that was or, private conversation. Or, or, I ask, or I ask Jeeves. Tell, tell us what, what is lovely. I, I, t- I, so wait, what, I tell you what. Portal. I tell you what I'm not using. I'm not using Bing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what, what were you actually asking? I, I didn't mean to. So like, I just typed in the word egg into Google because we've, we're all about the egg, which sounds like an Ace of Base song. Um, uh and uh, what I'm seeing here is the Wikipedia page. I'm seeing links to Tasty, Bon Appetit. I'm seeing Google uh, uh, Google Maps listings. I'm seeing nutritional information. It showed me a lot of very relevant things about an egg. Well, yeah, but no, and but it doesn't link point... off to Google Egg or something. <laughs> no, I mean, I am looking at this. I'm looking at the search results now, right? And the actual search results from other pages are a little tiny bit at the bottom of the screen, going off the bottom. There's a big thing about Google Maps, which is what it's saying. It's Yes, it's showing you things about eggs on Google Maps, but the point is they're on Google Maps. Right? But so the, so it's linking off to a different Google property. The, the, you, uh, the text... I'm re, You know, when you read the article, you'd have seen this is the point they're making. And I kind of see the point because... If you are, um, you know, if you're Apple Maps or Map Verity or so, or something, the Google Maps stuff is appearing right at the top of the search results. Does it actually deserve to be there? Don't know. You know, literally the only thing. Type in egg, and I'm doing it in 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 in, uh, in a private browsing window, so it doesn't skew it with me being logged in. The only thing that is linked, with the exception of the thing at the top with all images, shopping, whatever, the the only thing that in here that links off to a Google resource is um, the map. No, everything so, else. The, the thing at the right where it says egg, food, comes from Wikipedia is called the direct response where they're taking yeah. a snippet of another page. They're including right. that in the 41%. Yeah. Oh, fuck off. And that's th- fine. It, it's showing it from Wikipedia. Or so egg a lot of people dog. don't think it's fine. So Wikipedia is an example that isn't really applicable because they don't serve ads and they're not for profit. But they also do this to for-profit entities. And so instead of then clicking through, you're just getting right. the information yeah. you need. And so that's thing, where let's type in the let's thing. Type in Apple. The thing directly underneath um, uh, the Wikipedia link for me is the thing which says top questions answered. Which seems to which has a bunch of videos from people, and clicking on them doesn't take you off to another website. I don't know who produced those videos, where they came from. It's just a video of Gordon Ramsay talking about this stuff. Who did it? Who created it? Uh, who paid for the video? Don't know. No idea. None of that shows up. You know. So as I say, I'm I'm nowhere near as worried about this as these people writing this thing are. But I can kind of see their point that the actual thing taken up with what we used to think of as the Google search results is now being pushed down quite a long way by things which interpret their search results for your own good. I yeah. don't know. I don't buy it. I think the vast majority of this page that I'm seeing is 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 useful content that links off to other resources. Um, uh, the whole thing about those videos, those top I, questions Yelp very answered, much disagrees I, with you, for example. Yelp? They're yeah. one of the ones that sued over this. Oh, well... Oh, be, 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 one be, search en- one search engine has got you know sour grapes over another search engine movie at ten. Okay. Well, um, it all it all to be pointed out, and I have no brief for Yelp here because if their company dies, I'm fine with that. But if you, <laughs> but if, if, wow. it, it, the ter- <laughs> wow, that was hardcore, dude. <laughs> First of all, they're terrible, and secondly, they barely exist in the UK. So what do I care, right? If you want restaurants, you should be looking at Zaga or something. Anyway, um, <laughs> if you are um. 
if you are Yelp and your business model is collecting information about things like businesses and exposing them to people, and then Google go, you know what, we're going to invent a rival service and then just bake it into the top of our search engine, they kill your business overnight. And that is exactly what Microsoft got busted for on the antitrust thing in the late 90s, right? By going, we we are dominant in Windows, so we're going to make everyone use Internet Explorer just by shipping it by default. That's exactly the same thing in my mind. I don't think it's the same. Oh, it's fine. I think you would. I think so, we're talking about apples and oranges because because which like, are very similar, way- as we have said before on the show. They're both fruit. It's not like you're an orange and the moon, right? You can eat them. They're roughly the same calories. They're roughly the same size. All right, they're roughly the same right. shape. Guys, you two are to crappy two are being today. All right, all right. <laughs> I think we're talking about apples and chickens. Is that <laughs> <laughs> much better? Although it sounds like quite a nice dinner now. Chicken oh, apple. I'd like apples and chick. chicken apple yeah, sausages. Anyway. Sorry, that'd be delish. Um, oh, I love chicken apple sausage. <coughs> anyway, shall we? Shall we move? What, the, what are we talking the about? The right artist now? ninety second segue <laughs> to a segue to a segue. Wow. Well, um, let's bring us um, back on topic. Um, apparently, the U.S. government have commanded Microsoft to buy TikTok. <laughs> or, this is or all, something. This is all, there, I there mean, is this is so much to unpack here. This is like this is legitimately probably a segment. I, I I don't even know where to start. I I truly I read this and when I, I I saw people talking about it on Twitter and I assumed it was a joke. Well, I thought this is going to be satire or something. I'm looking at it going, what? This can't be real. And I still don't think I actually understand it. I mean, are Microsoft doing this specifically because they've been ordered to by the White House? Well, um, let's explain what happened first. Yeah, right? so, so if you could, because I've tried to understand this and read about it, and I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I, 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 so, my internal infrastructure just fritzes out when I think about this story. So please explain. No, I it only, to me. I, I only scanned this, and I'm sure Jeremy will be able to follow up with more information. But from what I understand, you're not supposed um, to rely on that happening. <laughs> why not? <laughs> <laughs> Look, would you rather <laughs> depend on Jeremy? Or my brain. That's so these are two not you talk, totally you talk unreasonable about, points. I, I will recuse myself from said discussion. <laughs> you talk about apples and chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so Trump made a, an announcement the other day that he was planning on banning TikTok. We've talked previous in previous shows about um, uh, privacy concerns with TikTok. They are uh, owned by a large Chinese <clears throat> company, and they have some American operations. And the and the and the the company swears blind that the information in TikTok is not going back to to the Chinese government or anything like that. Anyway, Trump said he was going to ban it. Um, and uh, Microsoft had announced that they were in, ne- in negotiations and talks to buy TikTok from, or the American bit of it, from this company. Um, and Trump basically then came out and said, I, I'll, I don't mind a sale going through, but the American government will have to receive some of the money. Um, which... At least from my understanding, has never happened before. Is without uh, precedent. Oh no, it's happened. I lo- mean, it's happened loads before. It just wasn't the president doing it last time. It was Capone. How is this reasonable? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the thing that's confusing is not only that Microsoft released the following: Microsoft fully appreciates the importance of addressing the president's concerns. It is committed to acquiring TikTok, subject to a complete security review and providing proper economic benefits to the United States, including the U.S. state. The treasury. I, I legitimately don't even know what that means. How would the treasury uh, be in any way, shape, or form involved? Yeah, I mean, and, and I, it also seems like Microsoft are just rolling over on this. I mean, and this the is other ridiculous. thing that's weird is it says the two companies have provided notice of their intent to explore a. Pre- two companies here, by the way, are ByteMark and um, and Microsoft. A preliminary proposal that would involve a purchase of TikTok service in the United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. And would result in Microsoft owning and operating TikTok in those markets. So will then there then be two TikTok apps, and it depends where you download it from. And then I think the it's main quite concern possible. with TikTok is the algorithm is completely a black box. And unlike something like Facebook, where you can only share with your friends or make public, and it still has to get found, TikTok recommends anything on the platform to anyone on the platform. So there is a large amount of. of because the algorithm is a black box, there's a large amount, theoretically, of sway that the Chinese government could have over what is popular and what is not, which I, I see the legitimate concern there. 
but I just don't understand how you have the same app owned by a different company. And like India has already banned it, but India is not on this list. So then how, like there's yeah. still more questions than answers here, but anyways. Uh, well, I, I should point out um, very briefly, uh, bite, do- <laughs> bite dogs. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I did no, say Bite Mark, the, which is you said by, now, much very, as, very, very much, incorrect. Much as I appreciate Bite Matthew Mark... Matthew Block who, is going to be a very rich man. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm, 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 yes, much as Bite Mark do delightfully provide our audio hosting for this podcast and for previous podcasts, and we appreciate them very much. Thank you very much for that. Um, they do not own TikTok. <laughs> um, yes, they, 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 do, make, they, do, they do make us dance repeatedly, though, for <laughs> the services. But, yeah, I mean, literally, all that stuff you're describing, I keep thinking, what? And... It takes it takes a bit for the US government to go, this is terrible. This is software giving money, giving information back to the government, and we absolutely have to put a stop to it, in a world with prism in it. And I'm assuming the team who built all the stuff that Snowden released didn't just down tools the day he walked out with a USB stick, right? So what have they done in the last <laughs> seven years? They didn't just go, oh, well, everyone knows about it now, better stop. That was... You know, all the stuff that was described then was state of the art nine years ago. What's happened yeah. since? So it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if, you know, if you look at um a lot of the US laws, information could flow back to the US government. Especially since they've now apparently got to have a piece of the deal, which is, I don't get it. I mean, this is just, you just go, no, the, what? The US Treasury part is, <clears throat> excuse me, legitimately baffling. It is. Yes, uh, Jono, to Jono's point, it does seem like in a world in which Apple went, no, we're not unlocking a phone for you. The FBI will fight this all the way up to the, <clears throat> to the highest courts. The mics have just gone, okay, fine. I guess we'll buy TikTok then. So I don't know what, uh, what, uh, what the US government can do. Are they going to go, hey, if you don't do it, we'll all switch to Ubuntu. I mean, that would be cool, but I don't think that's, uh, Microsoft, you think they go, nah, man, we'll call your bluff on this. I right. mean, I don't think they've in any way, shape, or form asked Microsoft to buy it. I think Microsoft is looking at it as, here's a very popular app that is going to be a fire sale price because if it gets banned, that's worth nothing in the U.S. So I, anything, any value they extract. I, I mean, Google could potentially I, buy them. I, I don't think they have the political will to do so. I think Facebook would be antitrust immediately. So I, I don't know I, I, where I, another viable buyer would be. You think out of a clear blue sky, Microsoft just decided, yeah, we're going to buy TikTok, and of it's course. got nothing to out do. Out of the clear blue with- sky, they're one of the most. The, they have some of the most money on earth as a corporate entity, and are looking yeah, to no, 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 no. compete I, in new markets a- where they're not doing well. And this is a new market where they're not doing well. I get that it's a reasonable thing for them to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so there's no influence going on here at all. They've, they had conversations with the White House, which had nothing to do with this, and then decided to buy TikTok. I think they're one of the few companies that are able and willing in 2020 to write this check. Okay. I agree. With, I, I agree with Jeremy. They've got massive amounts of capital and this is an internet sensation. It's a way into having an influence on a younger demographic who they, who they can then sell Xboxes to. They can sell surface tablets to, they can do all kinds the, of stuff. The I only think other it, conceivable buyer I would see would be Amazon because they have the money and already work with the government closely enough that they, they've, they've taken a stance on that particular issue on the other side of Google as has yeah. Microsoft. So I, they're the only other company and I'd, I personally don't see it, but I, I mean, it's theoretically possible, I guess. I think Sousa were going to make an offer as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, sure, I'm sure they'd make an offer. <laughs> I don't think anyone would listen. Bad Voltage could also you, make I'll an offer. i $50. Yeah, $50. <laughs> How many Space Raiders are we willing <laughs> well, to pay? How many boxes of Space Raiders are we willing to pay for TikTok? Oh, <laughs> I'd forgotten about the Space Raiders thing. <laughs> Oh, that I, is a throwback oh, to no. quite potentially season one, not even season two. That was a while yeah, ago. Yeah, that was that was a while back. While yeah. Back. Um, oh. So now I want space raiders. <laughs> my inclination on the Microsoft and TikTok thing is because it's all unbelievably windy speculation at the moment. I think you're yes. right, and this could be and possibly should be a segment. So if we leave it a couple of weeks to develop and see what happens. 
So that's the other part is it's, as we're recording, still a lot of this is breaking. So information that you will have when you hear this, we will definitely not have had when we're recording it. So yeah. curious, like the next week's going to be super interesting for this topic. I, I, I did at first wonder, I mean, the dead, unfortunately, the deadline is before this. I wasn't wondering whether Microsoft were planning on doing a sort of Merrick Garland thing of going, yeah, we'll do that. And then not doing it until November and then going, oh, we don't have to care anymore. But, <laughs> you know. Well, so September 15th is the clock, I guess. Yeah, the deadline. that clock could change, but <laughs> I have a I have a related question. Given the fact that this uh, it's it, at this point, it's looking fairly likely that this entire show is going to be about news because we're running out of time to cover our main <laughs> yeah, segments. Rapidly running like out of time, and, and well, they're not like even halfway well. through the news in this doc. <laughs> no, we're so well organized. But um, so we might have a little bit of extra time. But I, I wonder. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Like TikTok has definitely become like a big thing, right? Um, mm. Um, Twitter and Facebook has been becoming increasingly under attack for lots of different reasons. You know, there was the whole like all the advertisers coming together with Facebook and doing the boycott. Twitter has been under fire for a long time. Um, you've seen like some people on the more conservative side of politics have they set up that other network. I can't remember what it's called, but there's a different social media network that's trying to take people away from Twitter. Do you guys think that social media is just becoming a lot more fragmented now? Because it seems like, you know, Years ago, like five or six years ago, it was all about Facebook. And then Twitter kind of came in and, and things evened up a little bit more. But I feel like things are starting to fragment and people are just losing confidence in any of these individual platforms. What do you think? Uh, well, I think there's um, there's a big externality here that uh, as each individual social network gets busted for various things. So um, people start to lose trust in Facebook. They're not just losing trust in Facebook and all jumping ship to Twitter. Or people are just losing trust in Twitter and jumping ship to Facebook. It, In addition to, if you screw up, it not only does it decrease the credibility of your own service, but it marginally decreases the, the credibility of social media as a concept. Which is why... Right. In an awful lot of, if you read um, media op-ed pieces about why the world looks like it does at the moment, they won't normally say it's, you know, one of the reasons is Facebook or one of the reasons is Twitter. It'll be one of the reasons is social media. Yeah. And, and I think that's largely because, yeah, there are differences and nuances to the way they do business, but each of them are essentially attempting to create an environment which is borderline addictive to get you to keep coming back and and it accentuates um bad news rather than good pylons rather than hugs you know however you want to look at it and that's the social media playbook as a whole it doesn't really matter which social media company you are doing it if i mean it, yep. it arguably if you built <laughs> a social media network which didn't do that like I don't know, Mastodon possibly, or maybe it does if it got popular. Um, then I I don't know whether you'd call it social media. We'd probably need another name for it. I do keep reading about people becoming increasingly disenfranchised with social media, That's and I tend to read that on so, and I tend to read that primarily on social media. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think there's a couple of things here. I think Facebook is a case study in how focusing on the short term benefits of something put your long-term sustainability at risk, right? By focusing on short-term clicks and vitriol and what made people read the most in the short term, they have poisoned the platform in the long term, to, to me. Hmm. Hmm. I, th I think people trust social media less because as it's clear, at least in the, in the United States, but I think given what happened in other countries as well, people trust people less than they have in a very long time. And that's regardless of whether they're credible people or not credible people. The, the word credibility almost is, is changing. And I think that's having a, really a systemic impact on society. And the change in social media is more a reflection of that change in society than yeah, it has yeah, yeah. anything to do with social media. People uh, are, certainly, are certainly trusting information less. I see. Um, that, that, well, that's interesting. Just before, because I, I want you to come back to that point, Jono, but... Jerry, you're describing that as cause and effect, that um, social media is reflecting an increasing distrust in society. But I, I think it's I, also I, a contributing I, I, factor. Well, yeah, because I'm not sure whether I buy this, but it is not at all hard to find people who firmly do believe that social media is the driver of that change in society, not a recipient of it. 
So I, I don't think it's just social media. I think it's uh, clearly, I, I was of the mindset when I was younger that the internet was going to be one of the greatest common goods that man had ever produced because yeah. access to, inf- as someone who believes that education is everything, access to information to me at the level that the internet enabled, the, the possibilities in my naivety were almost yeah. unbounded. And it turns out what happened was the negative aspect of that I underappreciated and I think like we we in tech it's become clear to me have like a Pollyannish problem we don't realize we take the most naive view of a lot of the tech that we offer yes. without realizing the serious serious societal imp- uh, implications that some of this tech has and now I 2020 like that's coming home to roost in a big way but isn't it just reflective of people like if you look at the internet as a whole which is obviously <clears throat> quite big at this point um and I appreciate the fact that I am an eternal optimist here, <clears throat> but um, I would argue that as a general rule, the internet has been a force for good, but there's always dark sides to the internet. And that's the same with humanity, right? Like you're always going to get, as as Jim Jeffrey says, you know, the reason why we have laws and the reason why we have rules is because some people fuck it up for the rest of us. And, <laughs> right? and that's the reason why you have to have that. Isn't the internet just a reflection of humanity in that regard? But I, I think it it has enabled very fringe, very dangerous mentalities to proliferate in a way that just wasn't possible before. Right. That's true. But isn't that then outweighed by the proliferation of of good people, of kindness, right? I mean, I get to see... I, I wish I could say yes, and I, I think I'm not sure, and we'll soon see. I Yeah, yeah. Th- this is the thing. I um, If you'd have asked me that question five years ago, Three or years ten ago, years ago, I, yeah. I, 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 quite possibly if you'd have asked me th- that question in... um. You know, in 2018, I might have said yes. But now, looking out the window, um, you know, at the world, reading the news, I'm honestly, I honestly don't know what I think about that question. And part of the, part of the point here, I think, and this is very big picture philosophy stuff now at this point, this discussion, but (laughs) I think Jeremy's point about taking that Pollyanna-ish view, saying, um, we as technologists, we just create neutral tools. What's done with them is not our responsibility. It's a, it's, it's a very scientific mindset. And the yep. scientific community are also rather guilty of going, we just make discoveries. What happens to them? Nothing to do with us. Um, and maybe we should be thinking about this sort of thing earlier. You know, even if, um, this technology that, that we're currently inventing has the potential to be used for good, maybe we should say, Maybe we shouldn't do this, even though they were, maybe we're prepared to sacrifice some of the good things that we could potentially get from it in order to avoid the bad. And historically, the tech community has gone, that decision has nothing to do with us. We just invent. That's up to uh, politicians and the public and the media what happens with these weapons that we're placing into people's hands. Nothing to do with us. And I'm starting to believe, I, I haven't, by any stretch completed this journey and i still don't know whether i totally believe it but i'm starting to think that that naivety is problematic and we ought to take a bit more responsibility for putting these things into the world Uh, oppenheimer realized it when he said i am become death the destroyer of worlds i don't see zuckerberg having that moment of clarity well, the thing is as well as, and we've talked again about this in the show, um, I think there's two other elements to this. Like, I, first of all, I agree with you. I think that in many cases, we've talked about that social media has, has almost become like a utility, but it's not regulated in the same way. It's not, you know, whether it's from government or whether it's from um, the social media companies themselves. And there's no doubt that there, historically there was a view in social media of like, you know, we just we just we just make the pipes. You put the yeah. stuff into the pipes, and I. Th- but to be fair to the social media companies, I think when they started that journey, and it was a much more innocent world back then, um, they could have that view. But I think what we've discovered with um, with just how politically divisive the world's become, with state sponsored hacking and and all this kind of stuff, they, they cannot take that viewpoint anymore. The thing yeah. that worries me a little bit, and I know you guys probably agree with this is it seems like they only ever make those decisions when they're pressured into them. Right. Like Facebook really only started changing their view on this when they were pressured into making the decision. And that's why I was so proud to see all of those companies boycotting the advertising. Now that won't last. And it really has an impact their bottom line looking at their revenue. Right. Surprisingly. But the, but I, I think that they, 
what will change Facebook is because they're just a giant advertising machine. And if companies seriously consider moving away, then that will change the policy. The tricky thing is, putting it bluntly, there isn't any other platform that is anywhere near to as efficient and as effective as an advertiser as Facebook. And that's the big problem. You're not going to go to Google. You're not going to go to YouTube. You're not going to go to LinkedIn. So advertisers really got nowhere else to go. And I think that puts them almost into the same kind of dependence we are in with, with Chinese manufacturing. I think a lot of people like, we don't like the way that the Chinese government treats, you know, their human rights record and all the rest of it. But a lot of companies are like, we can't sell devices if we get them made over here at the price point that consumers want. So they're kind of dependent on that manufacturing piece. And I think almost advertisers have become dependent on Facebook. And that's the, that's the word. Well, I think the lesson that the supply chain as a whole learned during this COVID, like the, the, that same lesson will be learned again then, if that's the case. Yes. In my oh, this, yeah. this is the yes. thing. I mean, yeah. you've heard me say in the past that, you know, you do the five whys, the Toyota thing on why is this a problem? Why is that a problem? Why is that a problem? You do it five times. And my fifth answer always ends up being destroy capitalism. Right? <laughs> this, is, this is this is a perfect example of that. If, if you ask companies to choose in between, should we advertise on Facebook and, you know, make money and get our product out there? Or should we walk away from Facebook on principle because there's a better world in the future, even though it costs us a bunch of money now? Everybody chooses money. Um, mm. And arguably they should do. Um, I think you are massively oversimplifying. This. <laughs> yes, of, of, co- of, of course I am. But but equally, I think you'd agree that that is at least one of the big drivers on one side of that argument. But I don't know a way of fixing that. We have a society which is optimized around money. That's the way it works. You can't fix that unless you well destroy capitalism, and thing- which I don't want to do because I quite like the fact that I could talk to you guys over the internet. Check it out. This is really handy. Well, and what's worked. What's honestly worrying, again, without turning this into an advertising discussion, is that it's going to be very difficult for someone to be able to stop Facebook's dominant position because we're increasingly becoming concerned of privacy and sharing our own personal information, things like that. Facebook have already got most of that information. So if Google want to compete with Facebook, for example, on the average, if we basically are of the view, com- the reason why companies go to Facebook is because the first piece of their sales funnel is Facebook ads. And the Facebook ads are so eff- effective and targeted, that means that they're dependent on Facebook to be able to get people into their funnels, right? Therefore, if you want to be able to compete with Facebook commercially, you need to make another service be as effective, as targeted as Facebook. They've got to compete on the same level to bring those companies back over because companies are not going to say, I'm not going to do this for ethical reasons. Um, Therefore, you need someone like Google or LinkedIn or whatever to be as good as Facebook. And my worry is that because, and this is a good thing, because we're becoming more conscious of our privacy, I think those platforms are going to be reluctant to solicit more personal information from people because they'll come under attack, which means that they can't then compete with Facebook. I disagree with you. Mm. But, well, that's, that's not true. I agree, given that side of the argument, but there are two ways to make Facebook and everybody else legal, um, uh, equivalent in in reach for advertisers. You can either have everyone else get as good and as targeted as Facebook, and yes, I agree with you, they'd have to do so by essentially being as invasive as Facebook, right? Or right. you stop Facebook being as invasive and make them get rid of a bunch of the data so they're not as good at targeting. So you bring Facebook down to everyone else's level by saying, this thing you're doing, yeah. And how, may, how do you do that? Break the company up like you did um, Mar Bell in the, sec- in the 70s. Right. So I think the reason why that's not going to work is because you have massive advertisers like Procter & Gamble who are going to lobby the crap out of the government to not do that? Uh, and uh, I, I will, I will buy that. I mean, maybe it's not politically. I think possible this goes back to, to your it. capitalism is bad argument. This is what I'm saying, man. <laughs> you know, why, why will Procter and Gamble ask to do that? You know, why number two? Ask three more whys, and your answer is going to be destroy capitalism. I'm not kidding. It's always the fifth why. It's really annoying. <laughs> now you see when we. When when Raccoon Show Enterprise launches, there will be an advertising platform built into it that will easily compete with Facebook. <laughs> you just Shall watch. we? Uh, we're, we're, ironically, we we had loads of time. Now we're running out. Of time. We, we are, we are <laughs> not running we? out of time. Um, and <clears throat> honestly, not only could we talk about this for the rest of the show, we yes. could talk about this for the rest of our lives. And I think largely yes. we will talk about this for the rest of our lives. All our conversations yes. are facets of that conversation. It's like the, it, you yes. know, the blind men touching an elephant thing where they experience different uh, bits of it. 
You've, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was He's, going in a very different direction. Yeah, I, I'm pleased that you saved it at the end. <laughs> only in your head, you weirdo. Right. So, um, <laughs> so it's become clear to me that the segment that we had planned for this show will likely need to be punted. Yes. <laughs> I think so. I think so. And we also, by the way, we need to leave time for an intro. Um, so we have two more. Do we have time to cover those two? Uh, well, I think we can quickly spin through these, yes. can't we? So very briefly then, um, uh, the Spotify CEO has basically complained that musicians aren't working hard enough and that's why they don't get enough money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I I thought this was interesting. Um, particularly, I'd, I'd be interested in your opinion on this, Jono, but... Um, so this is Daniel Eck, who is uh, CEO of Spotify, claiming that there's a narrative fallacy in place which causes music fans to believe that Spotify doesn't pay musicians enough. Right? I think that narrative fallacy appears to have been caused by a bunch of musicians going, Spotify doesn't pay us enough. He seems to be implying that it distilled out of the air like magic or something. But anyway, yeah. um, what he says is, some artists that used to do well in the past may not do well in this future landscape where you can't record music once every three to four years and think that's going to be enough. What's required from successful musicians, Eck insisted, is a deeper, more consistent and prolonged commitment than in the past. The artists today that are making it realise that it's about creating a continuous engagement with their fans. It's about putting the work in around the storytelling around the album and about con- keeping a continuous dialogue with your fans. Now, I mean, maybe you agree with that. Maybe you don't about that in order to make it, you have to do a shitload more work than the Beatles did in order to get successful. What I'm not sure about is... He seems to be suggesting that it's an immutable law of the universe that this has happened, whereas I think this that's been driven by things like Spotify, right? Mm. I, I mean, I don't think any musicians when what we want the way we want music to work is that it's not enough to just it's not enough to record an album and put our hearts and souls into it. Now we have to do a shitload more work staying in touch with people on TikTok. I don't so, think so, anyone wanted this, right? L- l- let me give my take because I am also Dino's b- the best informed here, so I will give me give my two cents, and then I'm curious what he thinks, and we'll let him talk the longest. I, you're comparing <laughs> the be- the time of the Beatles, which artificial artificial scarcity was a thing then and there was a very clear gatekeeper on all music and that gatekeeper kept the supply very small and very controlled and from there those people were very famous there's now no artificial scarcity and anyone can record anything so you now have an abundance of choice but with that comes the paradox of choice so you do have to engage more because whatever niche music you're into there's 10 of those things, 10 quality bands or a hundred quality bands where before there were a total of a hundred bands that were, that you could easily realistically get access to in, in a wide swath of areas. So the dynamics of music Spotify aside have fundamentally, in my opinion, changed. And, and because of that, yeah, making music in 2020 is different fundamentally than in the sixties when the Beatles were popular because the dynamics of distribution matter and they're completely different now. Yeah, I, I I completely agree. I completely agree with you, Jeremy. I, I I think he's right. Like I think the the way the music industry operates today, you do have to do that. Like the bands that are successful, it's it's a hard road, you know. You know, I mean, ACDC said it's a long a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. I think it's a longer way to the top than it's ever been. You can get the visibility, but you are a drop in the ocean, and that's one of the reasons why I think bands are doing things like, you know, they're 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 doing they're they're making whiskeys and beers and and they're selling merchandise themselves and they're they're doing virtual gigs and they're doing all kinds of stuff right uh, so I, uh, i mean okay i mean so... spotify are a cause i agree with you as well Ak. like the reason why we're in this world today is because of spotify but the reason why spotify is successful is because consumers wanted it and uh, yeah, like as a music okay. fan i love spotify the one thing i disagree with him in that piece is where he said that he alleges that many times artists have expressed that they're very happy with their royalties. I think that's complete bullshit. I don't think, I think if you are Iron Maiden or you are Muse or you are Beyonce, then sure. But if you are a, a jobbing thrash band um, and you're just trying to get along, I don't believe anyone's happy with their royalties. And, on Spotify. and 
Uh, more importantly, okay. um, uh, think back to the last time we had an argument in this show about something. I would like to point out that loads of people agreed with me in private email, which I'm not going to share with you. <laughs> <laughs> like, how is that an argument for anyone who's over five years of age, Daniel Egg? That doesn't it's work. So at interesting all. you say that because uh, they, people actually agree with me privately as well. Uh, isn't that interesting? <clears throat> I mean, wow. Well, hmm. I, th- I think honestly, my it's not even an objection. It's a sense of sort of disquiet and disillusionment about this is, yeah, okay, I, given your explanations there, I'll buy that. I'll buy that given that music is distributed fundamentally differently and there is no artificial scarcity anymore, even if that was largely created by Spotify, whatever. Yes, things are different now. But I don't know if you'd look at the world, the music industry now, and say, and ask the question, is it better for artists? I'm talking about enough consumers. Is it better for artists now than it was? And I don't know the answer. I think it is. I think it's great. Well, I think it, I think it depends. I think it's harder to make money in music today than it's than it has been. But I think in many ways it's a lot better because first of all, you can you can attract an audience. You can get access to an audience. You're not dependent on a record deal, which is that was always the major blocker for most bands. Right. But secondly. The cost of built of making music, like I can record an album in this room right now that will sound as good as a commercially available album. Like I just, it needs to be mixed well. But you could never do that. You'd always be limited by studio time and equipment and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's a great time for artists. I think the key thing is is that every band now needs basically a market and social media expert yep. to be successful. And I think a lot of bands uh, don't have that. Ha- and it's hard. Have, haven't adapted to the new reality where. What you did was yeah. you made good music, and then there were a bunch of question marks, and then you had a guitar-shaped swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is fair play. And my the, what's the, the last one? The final thing: Have you seen the Google are buying ADT, the security company? So you put this in the doc, and it is patently untrue. <laughs> oh, Google, okay, that's Google is that. investing. Uh, four hundred and fifty million dollars in ADT and buying a six point six percent stake. Oh, oh, uh, yes, yes, okay, yes. Which is um, not the same news. thing as acquiring Trade ADT. News. But yes, they're going to partner on a whole bunch of Nest things and yes. Um, yeah. uh, well, I'm I'm going to blame Bill who pointed this out to me as first story. But, sorry, Bill. Did he did he um, did I, he I, send I, you a private email about this story? <laughs> this was happening. He did. No. Um, that, uh, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. That is my mischaracterization of the deal. Fine, but. I thought two things were interesting about this. The first one is um, using Google Home speakers for security, so detecting what they call critical noises, things like smoke alarms or glass breaking, and having the speakers detect these noises in themselves, which I think is quite an interesting plan. I mean, there's also a bunch of speculation about using ultrasonic sound as a movement detector. So they do currently do this on the Google stuff with screens. If you walk Mm. up to it, it changes the font size because it knows you're walking nearer to it. But and they're doing that with ultrasonic. But there's no real reason why you couldn't do that to detect when someone's moving around in a room when you're out or something, mm. which is potentially interesting. But the second thing, uh, the, uh, and some other stuff does as well. So Amazon Ring detects fire alarms, for example, the same way. Right. But the thing that I thought was really interesting about this is that it's a passive system. So instead of, instead of saying, okay, so you want, um, your smoke alarms to work with your Google Home or your um, Amazon Echo or whatever. Now you've got to go out and buy a bunch of IoT smoke alarms and get them fitted, which will be $149 each, and you'll have to pay $10 a month subscription, and then when the company goes bust, they stop working, and blah, blah, blah. This works with your existing smoke alarms, right? You buy this thing, and you have materially improved your security, assuming it works. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff on Reddit about people dropping a glass and it going, oh my God, someone's breaking into the flat and possibly calling the yeah. police or something, right? Which you don't want, but they're bugs. They'll get right. worked out. Yeah, but, yeah. But I really... It's, it's very interesting, yeah. But I really like this passive concept rather than um, assuming that the way you should get better security is by definition buying more products from this company and shipping all your data to their servers. So I thought yes. it was a nice little... Uh, interesting way around the problem. Obviously, it applies much more to this, where there is 
something detectable, right? Yeah. But nonetheless, I thought that no. was quite a cool little innovation. No, I agree. By them. I think it's cool. I mean, yeah. and good, I'm not surprised Google are getting into this because everyone seems to be getting into the home security market like Comcast yeah. and have been doing that. So, yeah. Well, we are almost out of time, gentlemen. So we should wrap this up. We are. Um, um, so uh, this has been a bumper news show. It's been the bumperest of bumper news shows. So uh, boys and girls out there, be sure to go onto the Slack channel and go and let us know what you think about all these different topics. We always love to see what you think. Yeah. And I guess we'll, and I guess we'll see you next. I guess we'll do our... <laughs> previous topic maybe next uh, time i was gonna say our actual topic will be in the next show but um we should say thank you very much to marius quabeck from nerd Team media who are nerdteam.de for doing all of our editing cheers um, thank you marius this one should either be very easy to edit um because it's all one big segment or it should be very hard to edit because you spent all the time shouting at one another i don't know which <laughs> the truth is <laughs> indeed and there lies the problem all right latest folks later